We study magnetic field. First, we consider magnet. Any source of magnetic field B, magnetic field is denoted by B, and any source is a magnet. A magnet is a magnetic dipole. Dipole. In case of the electric field, we either have positive or negative charge. They are called the monopole. In case they are combined into single body with a finite separation, electric field is generated in such a manner. In the case of a dipole monopole, it radiates or electric field enters into a single point. In the case of magnet, it is very similar to the electric dipole, but magnetic field is absolutely different from the electric field. There is no end. For example, this is the starting point of the electric field from the positive charge. End point of the electric field at the negative charge. Here, there is no end. Just like that, North Pole and South Pole of a magnet radiates the magnetic field B and magnetic field enters into the South Pole. They are quite similar. It is always dipole and nobody has observed the magnetic monopole. Magnetic monopoles have never been confirmed. Electric current generates a magnetic field. Electric current generates a magnetic field. An orbital motion of an elementary particle produces the magnetic field proportional to the orbital angular momentum. For example, the elect electron makes a motion, even though it is not a circular motion, if we just uh, simplified our analysis, the current flows in opposite direction. In that case, straight wire carrying a current generate the magnetic field. If we bend this wire into a circle, current I produce the magnetic field coming out and enter into. So circular current or any circuit is a source of magnetic field. So it, it is a magnetic dipole. In the case of elementary particles such as the electron that is making a motion trapped in, trapped in, in a small region, then it can produce the magnetic field due to its orbital motion. However, even though it stops, electron at rest does not make any current and therefore, there should be no magnetic field due to the electron. However, it exists. That is called spin magnetic moment. Magnetic force is absolutely different from the electrostatic force in the sense that the magnetic force is proportional to the magnetic field and proportional to the velocity and proportional to the charge. However, the direction is, as shown in this figure, velocity, magnetic field, force. This is a positive charge. 
and this minus q is negative here the same magnetic field same velocity however the force magnetic force they are opposite due to the charge you can see e1 hat e2 hat and e3 hat you know the direction v cross v is along this direction and force is proportional to v cross v if charge q is positive if charge q is negative the direction is opposite so magnetic force is perpendicular to magnetic force is perpendicular to this velocity magnetic force is also perpendicular to the magnetic field magnetic force vanishes if v and magnetic field are parallel or anti-parallel if v and b are parallel or minus v and b are parallel then v cross b is exactly zero vector so there is no magnetic force sure if q equals to zero neutral electrically neutral charge does not accept any magnetic force as well as uh, electrostatic force magnetic force does not work it's uh, quite important force times displacement with the scalar product is the work if i substitute the force in here then we have v cross b and the displacement infinitesimal displacement is always expressed as the velocity times infinitesimal time interval because v enters e here as a scalar product and v cross the v is always perpendicular to velocity the force does not work at all in any case the magnetic field does not work at all so the kinetic energy of a particle under the magnetic field if there is no electric field the charged particle accelerates however the kinetic energy doesn't change that means the only the direction of motion changes the SI unit for the magnetic field is Tesla it's not a company it's a SI unit 1 Newton per Coulomb meter per second okay Coulomb per second is ampere so ampere meter is divided as a non SI unit there is a Gauss Gauss is a small unit so 10 to the 4 Gauss 10,000 Gauss is one Tesla so one Tesla is a very strong magnetic field magnetic field lines B is magnetic field tangent to the magnetic field line aha uh -huh. these are magnetic field lines around the magnet North Pole South Pole direction if you choose a single point its tangent to this magnetic field line is the direction of the magnetic field number of lines in a in the same cross-sectional distance many small so magnetic field lines are dense then the magnetic field is strong the density decreases so magnetic field strength is weaker than here the magnetic field lines all pass through the magnet never stops they all form closed loops 
it is not broken, it should be continuous, something like that. Never breaks. Any magnet has two poles, north and south. Any magnet is a dipole, north and south. They are always, if you break a magnet into two pieces, it becomes two magnets. It is always, always dipole. North pole emits electric uh, magnetic field lines. South pole accepts the magnetic field lines. Opposite poles attract each other. If there are two magnets, opposite pole attracts each other. If you, you have this kind of combination, they are repulsive, attractive. N and S are inseparable. If you break into two pieces, you have two magnets. Cross the fields. In general, in an electromagnetic field consisting of the electric field and magnetic field, the force applied to a charged particle is described by Lorentz force. The Lorentz force is the sum of the electrostatic force and the magnetic force. Electrostatic force is a charge multiplied by the electric field. Magnetic field, magnetic force is a charge multiplied by V cross B. So, in case electric field and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other, we call it cross the fields. This is a linear, for example, positive particle moving along this direction. We have electric field, regardless of the velocity. The electrostatic force is a proportional to, is a parallel to the electric field. In case it is negative charge, then the electrostatic force is opposite to the electric field. Next, we consider the magnetic force, that is Q times V cross B. V is here and magnetic field is here, V cross B. You can find the cross product is proportional to this direction that is opposite when the charge is a positive. In case we have negative charge, electric field is flipped from here to there Magnetic field is also flipped because they are both proportional to the electric charge, Q. So, they are flipped. If you arrange, arrange some force, uh, some strength of the electric field and magnetic field, you can reach a point at which the electric force and magnetic force cancels because they are always opposite. Q doesn't matter. It is a common E and B. Strengths of the electric field and magnetic field can be adjusted to make a complete cancellation. That happens if it is a zero, then means neglect this from this equation. We have the electric field is a minus V cross B. This is this illustrates the how Thomson, JJ Thomson discovered electron in a cathode ray tube experiment. So there is a, a circuit to heat this filament. And now it is known to be an electron. 
a charged particle is being emitted after heating the filament. As soon as the charged particle is being emitted, we apply the field. Here, electric field is higher. So this is a positively charged, and we have some parallel plate negatively charged. And then electron accelerates from negatively charged plate to positively charged plate. So let it be a hole so that this electron can accelerate and pass through this capacitor. As soon as it leaves this hole, it needs both electric field and magnetic field. Electric field, here negative and positive, two parallel, the parallel plate capacitor is prepared to make the electric electron bend in this way because, because this is a negatively charged particle. However, we can cancel this one with the magnetic field when we apply this kind of crossed field, crossing fields. Electric field is in this direction, and magnetic field is in this direction. And electric force and magnetic force are opposite. We can vary these two fields to let it satisfy this relation, then the force cancels exactly. Then it will arrive at this point, center, because of the exact cancellation of the electric force and magnetic force. Anyway, J.J. Thomson used this method to discover the electron. you will find the direction of the electric field and direction of the acceleration of the electron, they are opposite, okay? So we, we find the electric, uh, when we turn off the magnetic field, therefore, we can notice that charged particle is negative, for example. Measuring the ratio of electric charge of an electron divided by its own mass. Acceleration of an electron has an, can be computed by electrostatic force when magnetic force field is turned off divided by mass. Using this one, when it passes through an electric field, it accepts the electrostatic force, and when it travels along this direction initially, it makes a traveling motion. The distance of travel along this direction is a constant. However, along the direction of the electric field, it accelerates. So using this relation, we can find the ratio of the electrons elementary electric charge divided by its own mass. When you turn on the magnetic field and if not this one, but we cross where is it? Here, we cross B. This is we cross B minus we cross B. So it's wrong. Okay. 
In that case, the two forces cancels and the motion will be a straight line. Whole effect. So we can think about the, what kind of electric charge, either positive or negative, are moving inside the wire. As a graduate student, Hall discovered this when he was 24 years old. His experiment was a very simple, based on the very simple idea, keep the magnetic field the same. We don't know whether the dripping charged particle inside the wire is positive or negative. So in case it is a positive, in case it is negative, we know we have a meter to measure the direction of current. So we know in macroscopic way, we know the direction of the current. And we know the direction of magnetic field. Just put a compass. You can measure the direction of magnetic field. So it's determined, it's determined, and current is determined. We don't know whether the current is made of positively charged particles of flow or negatively charged particles of flow. If it is a positive, the velocity is parallel to the current. If it is negative, the velocity must be opposite direction. Negative charged particle moves along the opposite direction, must have the same current. Okay, in that situation, what happens? Both the positively charged particle moving along V and the negatively charged particle moving along the opposite direction must have the same force. Aha! In that case, if charge carrier is a positively charged particle, they are all, their population will be on this side. And if it is a negatively charged particle, because the magnetic force, they are accumulated on the same side. In that case, positively charged particles are being moved to here, we have more negatively charged, vice versa. Therefore, he measured the potential difference between two parts, two endpoints. He indeed has found that this is a lower and this is a higher in potential. That means the particles can creating the current, the dripping, drifting particle inside a wire is proved to be negative. And this potential difference is called the whole potential. So as a result, the electric field New electric field is uh, being generated because uh, we have a negatively charged particle and positively charged because a negative charged particle has a move. Usually inside it was a neutral, but part is a part negative. Then because the net charge must, must be conserved, there should be positive. So we have a higher potential here. The whole potential is a V over uh, V can be divided by the distance D to find electric field. And actually this is a positively charged and negatively charged. So 
the resultant electric field is opposite. It's wrong. It's not along this direction. It is along this direction. So positive from positive to negative. This is a higher potential, a lower potential. The crossing fields construct an equilibrium. Why? Magnetic field is along this direction and electric field is along this direction. They are making a set of cross fields. So at some point, they do not move more. So just uh, they make a static equilibrium of the state. Drift speed, drift speed of drift speed means the velocity of each drifting charged particle can be expressed as, you know, current density is number density and unit char charge of a single particle multiplied by velocity. We know average velocity of the this uh, current making electron is called the drifting velocity. The drift velocity is a J over an E. And J is current density, that is a current divided by the cross-sectional area. Okay, and we have electric field from this expression, electric field V over D, and this condition for the crossed, crossed, crossed field, we, because they are perpendicular, this cross product is simply V times V. They should be the same. And we know what Vd is current divided by the number density electron cross-sectional area multiplied by magnetic field. From this expression, we can determine the number density, number density of the drift electrons. So among the many, many charged particles, only a part of charged particles that are called uh, electrons, conducting in electrons, their density can be estimated by measuring the potential difference of this whole potential. Magnetic field, actual current, electric charge. Here, A is the cross-sectional area. This is the distance between the higher, lower and higher potential. So this width is L. So everything can be measurable. So the, from this measured quantity, we can determine how many electrons are moving around inside a wire per unit volume. Circulating charged particles. We know the magnetic field does not work at all because its force is always perpendicular to the motion. In case we have a magnetic field going down, the charged particles moving with the velocity v is accepting the acceleration toward the center. The resultant motion is a uniform circular motion. The centripetal force, QVB, should be because it is making a uniform circular motion, mv squared over r. From this expression, we can determine the radius of this uh, circular orbit determined in terms of mass, velocity, and charge and magnetic field. Sure, the period can be simply computed with this radius, 2 pi r divided by the speed multiplying one actually that determines 
the period in terms of this relation. Frequency is uh, just a reciprocal of this. In this case, it is on a circle, two-dimensional plane. However, in general, the momentum along this uh, direction parallel to B doesn't matter. That means that that is conserved. This is a special case. In general, the motion along the magnetic field is constant. So the resultant motion is a helical motion. These are the applications of this theory. The accelerator can be constructed. And there are synchrotrons and cyclotrons. So please read it carefully how they work. Magnetic force on a current carrying wire is just a simple application of uh, Lorentz force, especially for the magnetic force. QB cross B, in here QB is the displacement, displacement divided by time. And this time is divided to charge, in that case it becomes current. So QV is nothing but IL, where L is the length of a wire. So QVB, this uh, magnetic force, is expressed in terms of ILB, the same cross product. So using this, this formula, we can even integrate over a curve along a circuit. Torque on a current through. If you follow the calculation, what you find is the torque and torque in the magnetic field is a mu times a mu times b. This time is cross product, and mu is a magnetic dipole moment, and the magnetic dipole moment is along the normal direction and hat, and proportional to the current, and proportional to the cross sectional area. So, this figure. And this calculation confirms this formula. So magnetic dipole moment can be increased by winding the wire up many, many times. So this is a single turn. And if you increase the number of turns, magnetic dipole increases. And on in a magnetic field, this is circular wire feels the torque. And torque can always be, just like force can always uh, derived from the potential energy by, by taking minus the gradient, we can construct the magnetic, magnetic energy of a current carrying wire in a magnetic field as mu dot b. Previously, we, we, we computed very similar case. This was a P, and this is an electric dipole moment and electric field. Okay.